At its height, the British Empire was the largest empire the world had ever seen. It covered around 25% of the world's land surface, and large areas of North America, Australia, Africa and Asia were all part of the British Empire at one time or other. Britain was a party to both the First and the Second World War. World War I was an international conflict that in 1914-18 embroiled most of the nations of Europe along with Russia, the United States, the Middle East, and other regions. The war pitted the Central Powers, mainly Germany, Austria-Hungary, and Turkey, against the Allies, mainly France, Great Britain, Russia, Italy, Japan, and, from 1917, the United States. It ended with the defeat of the Central Powers. The Second World War was a conflict that involved virtually every part of the world during the years 1939-45. The principal belligerents were Germany, Italy, and Japan on the one side, called the Axis powers, and France, Great Britain, the United States, the Soviet Union, and, to a lesser extent, China on the other, who comprised the Allies. With 40 million to 50 million deaths incurred during the war, it was the bloodiest and the largest war in history. With the death of Hitler in his bunker and the surrender of German forces in May 1945, the war in Europe came to an end. With the dropping of atomic bombs in Hiroshima and Nagasaki in Japan in August 1945 and the subsequent surrender of the Japanese, the Second World War came to an end. Countries that formed part of the empire provided manpower to the British war effort in both world wars. With about two and a half million soldiers, the Indian Army contributed one of the largest contingents to the Allied forces to fight on a number of battlefronts during the Second World War. Ceylon was strategically important during the Second World War and, after the fall of Singapore in February 1942 to the Japanese, the existing defenses were strengthened in Ceylon to protect the country against an expected Japanese attack. It was especially feared that the Japanese might launch Pearl Harbor type of raids against the naval bases at Colombo and Trincomalee. Several Commonwealth units were hurried to the island as reinforcements. New airstrips were built, including one at the Colombo racecourse ground. On the morning of 5 April 1942, aircraft taking off from carriers of the Japanese Navy attacked targets in Colombo. On the 9th, Trincomalee was also air-raided. Except those killed during the Japanese attacks in April 1942, members of the forces that died during the war years in Ceylon died of sickness or accident. An organization called the Commonwealth War Graves Commission commemorates about 1.7 million Commonwealth men and women who lost their lives during the two wars in over 2,500 cemeteries and plots in more than 150 countries and territories. They are commemorated by means of headstones over graves and, where the remains are missing, by memorials inscribed with the names of the dead. The Commonwealth War Graves Commission has its origin in the work of Fabian Ware, the commander of a mobile unit of the British Red Cross, which, under his leadership, undertook the task of recording and caring for all the graves that could be found behind the lines of the Western Front, because there was no system in place to bury the war dead, or record or mark their final resting places. By 1915, their work was given official recognition and the Imperial War Graves Commission, now called the Commonwealth War Graves Commission, was established by Royal Charter on 21 May 1917. There are eight cemeteries in Sri Lanka in which the dead who qualify for commemoration according to certain criteria for commemoration of the Commonwealth War Graves Commission are buried and or commemorated. The Colombo Jawatha War Cemetery, which forms the subject of this video, is located at Torrington Avenue in Colombo, and is the largest Commonwealth War Cemetery in Sri Lanka, footage of which will now begin. The War Cemetery is located inside the civilian cemetery in the rear left corner.
At the entrance to the cemetery is the memorial enclosure, on the walls of which are displayed memorial tablets, which are made of Portland stone and commemorate over 300 men who died while serving in Ceylon during the Second World War, whose graves either could not be found or, if found, could neither be permanently maintained nor, for religious or other reasons, moved to cemeteries where their maintenance would be assured for all time. The land occupied by the War Cemetery, over 200 perches in extent, is owned by the Commonwealth War Graves Commission. Landscaping and maintenance work of this and other Commonwealth War Cemeteries in Sri Lanka is the responsibility of the Department of Botanical Gardens, Sri Lanka. There are 615 gravestones in the cemetery arranged in nine plots and three more apparently not assigned a plot according to the plan of the cemetery. Many more dead are commemorated by memorials. For the purpose of commemoration in Commonwealth War cemeteries, the war period for the First World War is regarded as being from the 4th of August 1914 to the 31st of August 1921, and that for the Second World War as being from the 3rd of September 1939 to the 31st of December 1947. This is why you will see the dates of death recorded on some headstones as going beyond the conventionally accepted end dates of the two world wars. On each headstone are engraved the regimental badge of the deceased, his unit number, the rank, the name, and the date of death with the age at death beside it. Most headstones also bear a symbol of the deceased's religion and a personal inscription. A register is kept at the cemetery in which details of the deceased, including his name, regiment, rank, names of nearest family members, place of origin, and grave reference, where applicable, are given. The register records the cause of death of the deceased in some cases, such as pneumonia and drowning. To those who might be interested to know whether any casualties from the Japanese attacks in April 1942 are commemorated in this cemetery, the general impression created by an observation of the dates of death recorded on the headstones is that they are not correlatable to those attacks, and a perusal of the register would seem to confirm the same impression. As a general rule, commemoration is restricted to personnel serving in a Commonwealth Armed Force, but other categories, including members of certain civilian organizations, qualify if they meet various additional criteria. Commonwealth men and women who were still in military service at the time of their death automatically qualify for commemoration irrespective of the cause of death, 
including natural death and suicide, provided they died within the qualifying periods mentioned earlier. The Cremation Memorial commemorates over 150 men of the Hindu faith who died while serving in Ceylon, and who were accorded the last rite required by their religion, that is, committal to fire. What you now see is the memorial to 28 Italian prisoners of war who died during the period 1940 to 1945 and were buried in Ceylon. Italian prisoners of war captured by the British in North Africa were first sent to different countries of the British Empire before being transferred to the United Kingdom. Those commemorated by this memorial would have died of wounds or sickness during their transit from capture in North Africa to POW camps in the UK. The principle of equal treatment of the dead adopted by the War Graves Commission in their commemoration is reflected in the standard headstones used irrespective of their military rank or civilian position in life. In a report to the Imperial War Graves Commission in 1918, Sir Frederick Kenyon wrote, the rows of headstones in their ordered ranks carry on the military idea, giving the appearance as of a battalion on parade, and suggesting the spirit of discipline and order which is the soul of an army, 